Jeff Weiss with part three of unit 11, wrapping up uh, the unit on landscaping with uh, slides on construction and maintenance. So after all the uh, plans are set and um, now it's time to implement them and to keep them up over time. So the goal here is to transfer the plans for the site to uh, do any uh, grading construction of any features that need to be built and to install the plants. So uh, first step is any site modifications and uh, for most of our yards that doesn't involve bringing in uh, caterpillars, bulldozers, and grading equipment but on uh, commercial maybe when your home was built uh, or uh, definitely for uh, commercial and uh, other landscaping applications, grading uh, work uh, may be required to create the contours uh, desired or to soften steep slopes and reduce erosion. In the case of my backyard, I uh, had a load, I, I used to have quite a, a sloping backyard into uh, a storm sewer in my neighbor's backyard and uh, I wanted to uh, reduce that um, so I had soil brought in and I created a small um, a retaining wall and filled that uh, area with with soil and then I um, uh, I put in a waterproof barrier and installed uh, um, plants to create a rain garden in that area. So instead of now having uh, water running through my off my uh, roof through my backyard and into my neighbor's property, now I have a rain garden um, that is um, full of native plants, which I enjoy. Uh, it uh, holds water in the yard for a few days before releasing it uh, uh, into the soil. Uh, and thereby uh, reduces the amount of runoff getting into and, and the amount of runoff and sediment getting into uh, the the uh, watershed where I live. So grading is tied to drainage because uh, the uh, uh, grading uh, changes the surface drainage and the soil preparation that you can do either as I did by installing a uh, a water barrier. Or, uh, or um, by putting in drain pipes uh, can um, improve and direct the flow of water uh, through the landscape. Now, as opposed to removing water, irrigation uh, involves putting water into the garden beds or into the plantings um, so that uh, you don't have to necessarily use the garden hose every time your plants need watering. And Soil fertility uh, is another uh, frequent uh, site modification. Uh, it might involve um, uh, loosening up hard uh, layers of soil or installing uh, uh, rapid draining uh, material like sand or gravel uh, or other changes to improve the um, fertility of the soil by adding uh, topsoil. Hardscaping is the hard or static features of the landscape, including patios, walkways, walls, decks, arbors, uh, lighting, fences, planters, etc. Um, these items both um, support the function of the landscape and create uh, um, many of the aesthetic um, elements to complete the effect of uh, the aesthetic effect of a landscape. More and more um, landscape designers are turning to permeable materials uh, that um, allow water to infiltrate into the soil and reduce uh, the uh, amount of um, runoff uh, similar to what I was trying to accomplish with my rain garden. A little bit more about uh, soil or preparation of garden beds. Um, when we, um, I think we talked earlier about uh, soil types and soil particles. Um, 
good garden soils are made up of loams with uh, um, mixes of clay, sand, and silt. Uh, they try to strike a proper balance between um, uh, drainage of water into the soil and holding fertility uh, in the soil. So, so clay uh, is a very uh, dense, heavy material, um, slow to drain, uh, but clay soils are often rich in fertility whereas uh, uh, sandy soils uh, quickly drain but uh, along with the drainage the um, nutrients frequently get um, washed off or drained out of the soil. Um, silt is an intermediate uh, material um, but when uh, these th three elements are mixed together and also have uh, uh, an amount of organic material uh, mixed in from compost or um, roots and other decomposed plant parts uh, they combine to make uh, a rich uh, soil for um, any kind of garden plants. And then uh, in some cases uh, physical loosening of the soil through tilling or turning, ripping or even aerating uh, might be necessary in order to provide the roots of the plants uh, with an adequate uh, area in which to expand and pull water and nutrients from the soil into the plants. Since trees and shrubs are the largest, um, the uh, most expensive, and the, in some cases the dominant elements of landscaping, uh, the issue of selecting the right trees and shrubs are um, a critical uh, decision for uh, landscape um, installation. So um, here's a list of considerations when selecting uh, trees and shrubs. Um, I'll, I'll point to a couple of them. Um, so uh, it should be obvious that uh, trees are planted small and grow uh, potentially to a very large size. So uh, when selecting trees, uh, you need to consider the location and the type of tree um, for not just the uh, size when it's being planted, but for the size when it matures. So if you're planting a uh, an oak tree uh, and that planting horizon might be 20, 30, 50 years before that uh, tree grows to its full size, but it would be a, a, a big uh, waste uh, to plant it uh, too close to a foundation where it might have to be uh, might be causing damage and have to be removed uh, long before it reached its full size and potential as a uh, landscape plant. Um, another um, uh, point here that I'll call out is the uh, wildlife attraction. I mentioned earlier that the ability of uh, plants to support uh, pollinators and uh, uh, native insects, uh, birds, in some cases amphibians and uh, and and mammals, um, makes them very valuable in uh, protecting those uh, those species and allowing them to uh, move between different areas where they can uh, uh, reproduce and carry on their life cycles. So um, for that purpose uh, our native plants are probably the best uh, wildlife attractors and I hope that you um, will consider uh, native plants for use in in the landscape. Um, there'll be uh, more information on that topic when we talk about sustainable landscaping next week. And then many of these other factors are also important uh, uh, considerations, as are um, the um, decision about uh, whether to put a tree or a shrub in a particular spot. Uh, trees are generally um, much larger than shrubs, shrubs being usually uh, 10 to 12 feet in a human scale. Uh, shrubs also uh, tend to have multiple um, stems and they create a, a bushier, uh, fuller uh, appearance at uh, human eye level than trees do. And uh, uh, 
both cases um, the vegetation or at least the uh, stems survive overwintering and return each year which uh, makes them valuable uh, permanent members of the landscape as opposed to uh, annuals and perennials that completely die back each year. So to install trees and shrubs, uh, timing is, uh, is important. Uh, spring or fall are the best times. Um, digging a hole for a tree or shrub, uh, it's always a good idea to use a much bigger hole than you need to support the root ball or the container that the tree was purchased in. And one of the reasons for that is that uh, the soil in the um, in the container or the ball may not be compatible with uh, the soil in the landscape. So in order to prevent the roots from hitting a incompatible soil and circling around and, and uh, strangling the plant within a few years, it's uh, always smart to dig a much bigger hole than the plant requires in order to give that plant uh, root space and time to overcome uh, potential incompatibility between soil types. Um, the plant preparation, um, when using bare root materials, they should be soaked prior to planting. Um, ball and burlap materials should have the burlap re and the ropes removed as far down as can be reached into the planting hole. So it may not be feasible to pull all of the burlap off, um, but get as much of it as you can so that the roots can spread out and avoid the situation that I saw at one of our preserves where um, dozens of B&B &B trees were planted uh, into a uh, reforestation area without the ropes and burlap ever being removed at all. Those trees were doomed. And then backfill from the soil and water to settle and mulch to help protect the, uh, uh, the plant from drying out. Uh, and also remember uh, not to pile the mulch against the um, trunk of the tree or the stems of the shrub. Um, mulch frequently carries a lot of uh, fungal uh, and bacterial organisms in them, and if they are exposed to the to the stem, they can uh, uh, cause Ill, uh, disease or death of the plant. So put the uh, uh, mulch in a ring around the um, uh, around the root zone, but leave uh, a space where the soil, um, where the stem, or the trunk of the plant is directly exposed to the mineral soil, and not the mulch. Herbaceous ornamentals, um, perennials. They're hardy plants that provide texture, form, and color. Ornamental grasses um, have come into uh, uh, widespread use in landscaping. They provide movement and late season interest, especially when they dry out. Uh, and there's many, many uh, lovely native grasses that are um, now being used as landscape plants. Uh, Little blue stem and northern drop seed, drop seed are just two of, uh, two of my favorites. Uh, there's uh, a number of ground covers. Um, unfortunately, some of them are highly invasive uh, and get away into our, uh, our preserves and plant areas. A couple of the ones I can think of off the top of my head are uh, English Ivy, um, Pachysandra, um, and Vinca. Um, so if possible, um, use uh, native ground covers uh, such as starry fall Solomon seal or uh, wild ginger and avoid um, introducing more uh, pest plants into our uh, environment. Uh, bulbs provide seasonal color uh, especially in spring and bedding plants uh, annuals especially uh, can be used to quickly add bold color or accents in almost any area of a garden. There's a little uh, uh, blurb here about wildflowers and uh, um, unfortunately some of our native wildflowers have been hybridized. Um, there's a 
picture of uh, purple coneflower echinacea purpurea which is a lovely uh, plant native to this area uh, but that plant has been hybridized to uh, into all different colors and shapes and the different colors uh, orange uh, coneflowers uh, may not uh, attract butterflies and pollinators uh, uh, the same as the uh, purple color so uh, consider both um, the use of native plants and using the um, uh, natural strains rather than some of the cultivars that have been developed of those plants. And then there's a few uh, suggestions uh, of do's and don'ts for um, using color in the in the garden uh, and emphasizing uh, uh, use of uh, uh, clumps of uh, the same plant uh, matching the size, uh, using color as uh, accent and then um, using variety of size, spacing, and diversity to create interesting effects with your with your flowers. Uh, back to soils, uh, soil preparation first and foremost for uh, herbaceous plantings. Um, it's always smart to lay out the spacing for your uh, perennials and recognize that they will uh, uh, grow out over time first year cre uh, sleep the plant is uh, establishing a, a root system uh, the second year the plant is beginning to spread out and many times uh, a lot of customers don't like this but uh, it is really in the third year where the plant will uh, uh, reach its full size and uh, and flowering uh, potential so um, Good things uh, will come to those who wait for their perennials, their native perennials, uh, but once established, uh, those root systems are strong and deep and are able to uh, uh, withstand uh, cold uh, uh, drought and a lot of uh, herbivory from uh, uh, insects and other uh, animals that, and other hungry animals. So other um, tips for planting is replant to the same depth as in the ground as the plant was growing in the pot. Keep your roots in the soil and your shoots in the air. Uh, open the root system to encourage uh, growth and uh, do not mulch the crowns of plants. And I think this is the last slide. Uh, maintenance uh, uh, does not end when the plants are put in the ground and there's uh, quite a number of uh, plant care issues that occur. Uh, in general those issues are um, uh, less um, onerous and less um, uh, critical for native plants than for uh, um, some of our non-native plants but uh, even uh, native plants require uh, uh, watering uh, to become established. Uh, they, they, uh, all plants require weed management, uh, some thinning and pruning over time, and then um, like all good things a uh, landscape uh, uh, reaches the end of its uh, useful life and I, I just uh, removed uh, a hedge, a screen from the back of my yard and I'm going to be starting over again uh, uh, next spring with an espalier where I'm going to try to grow some uh, uh, fruit trees along uh, along a fence uh, in my backyard um, so I can get some fruit out of my hedge. But um, uh, maintenance is ongoing and uh, uh, for your assignment this week and next I'm going to ask you to uh, uh, prune a tree or a shrub and take a before and after photo and describe uh, uh, what you did to maintain that plant. So with that, um, Unit 11 is complete and uh, thank you for your attention. I hope it was uh, helpful to you.